IVF stands for in vitro fertilization. To simply put, it is the coming together of a sperm and an egg and the fertilization of an egg by a sperm outside the uterus. The fertilized egg, which is now called an embryo, is transferred back into the uterus after two to five days for implantation. And all things being equal leads to a pregnancy. This process, however, requires a medical and technological intervention. Under normal circumstances, fertilization occurs in utero, meaning that fertilization occurs inside a woman's uterus or a womb after unprotected sexual intercourse. And if all hormonal conditions are met, then fertilization will occur. The process of IVF entails one, the stimulation of the ovarian follicles and egg using suitable hormonal medication. During a normal cycle, a woman with normal antral follicle count can recruit about seven to 14 eggs, but only one is released during ovulation. The other follicles, they eventually die off and they support the primary follicle, which is the one that is released, grow and mature. They support that follicles with nutrients and hormones. During an IVF cycle, however, the idea is to supply the ovaries with more hormones, causing all the recruited follicles to grow evenly, and eventually they all mature. During their growth, a transvaginal ultrasound is used to examine the ovaries to kind of monitor their growth and see how they grow and measure the diameter of these um, follicles. A blood test is also done to monitor the levels of the reproductive hormones. Once these eggs are matured, they are retrieved through a minor surgical procedure that involves the use of ultrasound imaging as a guide and then a whole needle is passed through the pelvic cavity to remove the eggs. This process might require mild anesthesia to reduce any potential discomfort during the minor surgical retrieval. Once the retrieval is done, a sperm sample is collected from the male partner or a donor sample is prepared for insemination. The sperm and the egg, which has a surrounding cumulus, are mixed together in a dish and incubated overnight at an optimal temperature that mimics the internal environment. They are checked the next day for fertilization and prepared for culture. They are now cultured for three to five to or six days, depending on, the, on their developmental stages. The embryos are now transferred back into the woman's sutures on the third day as a cleavage stage embryo or on the fifth day as a blastocyst. For the embryo transfer, the cleavage stage embryo or blastocyst is loaded into a small tiny catheter and then is inserted into the uterus. This process is usually um, painless for most women. If the procedure is successful, implantation would normally occur around six to 10 days post egg retrieval. Now, to get down to the reason why you might need IVF, here are the top 10 reasons why you might need IVF. Any factor that can prevent the sufficient interaction of sperm and egg can be an indication for IVF. Some of the reasons to consider IVF includes tubal obstruction or pelvic adhesions. So the flow of sperm towards the, towards the oocyte and the movement of the oocyte towards the uterus is obstructed. If tubal surgery is not realistic, IVF is the method of choice to relieve this problem. Two, unexplained infertility. Unexplained infertility is the inability to conceive after one year of regular unprotected sexual intercourse with your partner. It is further ex unexplained when the factors on both sides are clear. So basically, the woman is clear of any um, obstruction, there is no tubal factor, there is no hormonal factor on the woman's side, and on the man's side, the sperm is fine, nothing could be found. So there's like a, another reason why you should consider um, IVF, maybe in this case, um, ICSI because of the unknown factor. I'll make a video about ICSI and just please stay tuned and subscribe to this channel to get that video as soon as I release it. Three, 
male infertility. So depending on the sperm count of your partner, IVF or ICSI would be recommended. If the man does not have any sperm at all, um, they might use another procedure to retrieve the sperm and intracytoplasmic sperm injection might be recommended. Four, endometriosis. It's not very clear how some causes infertility, but people with moderate to severe um, endometriosis trying to get pregnant can actually benefit from IVF. Five, hormonal disturbances. So n ovulatory cycle disturbances, which means that the ovaries does not release an egg during the menstrual cycle due to hormonal disturbances. So basically, ovulation does not take place and does not mean that the woman is going through menopause. It just means that the eggs are not released and when the eggs are not released or when an egg is not released, then obviously fertilization and pregnancy would not occur. But IVF would be an indication if treatment of ovulation induction is um, unsuccessful. Six, you have diminished ovarian function and also age-related infertility. So during the course of a woman's normal reproductive life, her ovarian function decreases with age. In many cases, this the reduced ovarian function can also be conquered through the use of IVF alone or in conjunction with some IVF add-ons like ICSI. Like I said before, I will make a video specifically on ICSI and please stay tuned. Seven, family balancing also referred to as sex selection. For families wishing to have a particular gender after having a previous child, or in some cases couple opting for sex selection due to medical reasons, they can do so through IVF and some add-ons like PGS and PGD. Eight, genetic disease screening using pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, PGD, or pre-implantation genetic screening, PGS. So PGD and PGS are used for patients who are at risk of passing on genetic disorders to their offspring as a result of one or both parents being carrier of a specific um, disease type. Diseases such as six chief fibrosis, um, X-linked hyper IgM, hemophilia, duchin muscular dystrophy can be screened. Nine, fertility preservation for cancer patients and social egg freezing. Like I said before, radiotherapy and chemotherapy does have a detrimental effect on women's fertility, IVF for fertility preservation is an option for women undergoing cancer treatment to freeze their eggs if they are single or embryos if they are partnered. Women who are advancing in age and have intentions of having kids um, in the future can also freeze their embryos using IVF. The last but not the least point is um, sexual orientation. Some members of the LGBTQ community who intend to have kids that would be genetically um, related to them would benefit from IVF as well. So there you have it. These are the 10 considerations for IVF and we've covered the basic definition of IVF and a summary of the process and the indications of IVF. The next upcoming video will focus on ICSI as an add-on to IVF and it kind of sheds a light on the difference between IVF and ICSI. Please share this video with a friend or a loved one who would benefit from it and feel free to subscribe below. Thank you so much for watching this video and cherish life.